and welcome back to the 2021 Macabre Month of Horror. If you're new to the Brickwall Pictures channel, the Macabre Month of Horror is a yearly series I do every October, where I look back at and review horror films from all around the world. Make sure you check out past year's Macabre Months of Horror. Links to each full playlist are in the description. Today I am reviewing Beyond the Black Rainbow, the first film from Mandy director Panos Cosmatos. Hello, Anna. How are you feeling? You look tired today. Have you had uh, any headaches? If you are unaware, Panos Cosmatos is the son of filmmaker George P. Cosmatos. The man behind films like Cobra, Rambo 2, and a film that I actually love, Tombstone. Beyond the Black Rainbow was financed largely by royalties from Tombstone, so there you go. Panos Cosmatos' second film, Mandy, pulled off the impressive feat of busting through the typical art house horror barriers and leaving an impression on more general audience members than niche horror is often able to do. The wild Nick Cage performance, stylized violence, gorgeous visuals, and acoustic bliss of the score and sound design made Mandy a clear highlight of 2018. Beyond the Black Rainbow didn't break through to wider audiences in the way Mandy did, though it does certainly have a following within the art house horror crowd. If you loved Mandy, there's an extremely high chance that you'll at least like, if not flat out love, Beyond the Black Rainbow too. The two films are quite similar aesthetically speaking, and it's easy to view Mandy as the refined version of Beyond the Black Rainbow, which is made for about one-sixth the budget of Mandy. Despite the lean budget, Beyond the Black Rainbow does not feel like a compromised vision whatsoever. The money is all up on the screen, with wonderfully retro and elaborately designed sets. Beyond the Black Rainbow is a visually sumptuous film. The incredible use of color and stylized lighting persists throughout every scene, until the stark lack of color in the 1960s flashback, which just might be my favorite part of the entire film, though it wouldn't work nearly as well if the rest of the film weren't so overloaded with chromatic excellence. The film is without a doubt style over substance. Now, I don't necessarily mean that as a strike against the film, though for some it certainly will be. For others, this may be an exception to the rule that being style over substance is a bad thing. I sort of have a foot in each camp. I would also say the same label applies to Mandy for the record. They're both supremely stylish films that are really more about the experience than they are about the narrative. Beyond the Black Rainbow has very little plot, even less plot than Mandy, which is also kind of light on the narrative side. There are stretches where Beyond the Black Rainbow feels more like a long music video or a highly produced visual collage rather than a traditional film. If you were to break the film up into individual images, it would make for a wonderful art gallery on its own. The issue is with the connective tissue between these stunning images. It's so slight. I love the visual aesthetic, but personally, I could use a little more plot to hang all of this stylish dressing on. The wonderfully retro sound design and score, paired with the non-stop stunning visuals, ensures that the film is at least a feast for the eyes and ears. What's missing is the compelling purpose behind these striking images. You'll notice I didn't give any kind of overview to the story of the film, and that's because there's so little to it. You could spoil everything that happens in Beyond the Black Rainbow plot-wise in a single sentence. The only thing I'll say about the moment-to-moment -moment plot is that the ending is awful. It's a complete deflation from all of the languid buildup rather than a worthy payoff. It's a decidedly slow film that lingers on the meticulously crafted visuals and asks the viewer to soak in its atmosphere and mood. It will be up to the individual viewer whether or not the enveloping visual and audio presentation are enough to carry the full experience in the face of such a slight script. For me, the pros outweigh the cons by a pretty significant margin. The screenplay does not deliver on the excellence of the presentation, but the presentation is so goddamn good that I can overlook the uninvesting plot and shallow characters for this moody, atmospheric experience. Check out Beyond the Black Rainbow if you've never seen it, and check out Mandy too if you haven't seen that one. Mandy gets a stronger recommendation. And I'm looking forward to what Panos Cosmatos makes next. I hope he brings his keen eye for style and atmosphere to a stronger screenplay on his next film. Make sure you subscribe to Brickwall Pictures for the rest of the Macabre Month of Horror. You can follow along with this playlist or any other Macabre Month of Horror playlist. They're all in the description. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.